Hi everyone. So in this standard, we start to learn about proofs. And so um, we first need to understand what proofs are and uh, different types of reasoning in order to be able to write quality proofs. So um, there's going to be a lot of background information in the standard before we jump into the standard itself. However, all the background information that I'm giving you is pretty important to know and understand before um, jumping into the GCO9 standard because you do need to know the basis of a proof. So we're going to start with just intro to reasoning skills. There are different types of reasoning. Um, there's uh, the two types that we're going to learn about are inductive and deductive. Inductive reasoning is when we assume something is true based on other specific cases that are true. So basically we're observing something and we're following a pattern. And so we're going to assume something's true based on the pattern that it follows. For example, in the following example here, um, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.004, what should the next number be um, and how do we know? Well, what's happening each time between each of these numbers is there's a pattern. And the pattern is that we're multiplying by 0 0.1 to get to the next number. So if I take this last number and I multiply it by 0 0.1, I wind up with a 0 0.0004. And so how we were able to make that conclusion is we used inductive reasoning. And we saw that with the first three numbers, what's happening is we're multiplying by 0 0.1. So we're just going to assume that that's what's going to happen between the last number and the next number that we were trying to find. So we were following a pattern, which is using our inductive reasoning skills. Next one, how do you know that all bees have two wings? And I'm not talking about like there are some bees out there that have broken wings or they don't have two wings, but a majority of bees have two wings. They're born with them. And the reason why we know that is because when we were a little kid, we observed bees out in nature and we came to the conclusion that all bees had two wings we were using our inductive reasoning skills. We were observing a pattern. Um, when uh, weather forecasters watch weather patterns, um, they're using inductive reasoning to help predict the weather. So they recognize and describe patterns and then they try to make accurate predictions based on their observations. So what weather forecasters are doing when they're trying to predict the weather is they're using inductive reasoning. Now, inductive reasoning is not completely reliable um, because patterns can change. So that's why sometimes when they predict the weather outside, it's not always accurate because they're just watching weather patterns to help them try to determine or predict what the weather is. Now, mathematical ideas and principles are often formed based off of inductive reasoning, so based off of patterns. However, inductive reasoning does not prove anything to be true. So when we use our inductive reasoning, it's not completely reliable for us to prove that something is uh, true or legit. Inductive reasoning leads to something called a conjecture which is a statement that you believe to be true. But it's not a statement that necessarily is true. Um, for example, uh, back in the day, it was believed that all swans were white because the only observations that um, we had were of white swans. And so this led to a conjecture which is a statement that you believe to be true. This led to the conjecture that all swans are white. However, this conjecture was proved false once black swans were observed. So again, we used inductive reasoning, we made a conjecture, 
and then actually we were proved wrong. Um, and how we were proved wrong is uh, we found a counter example, example which we're going to talk more about in a little bit. But a counter example is an example that proves your conjecture wrong. Um, another example, the product of two number odd numbers is, um, this is an example of a conjecture. The product of two odd numbers is, well, let's look at some patterns. Let's look at the product of two odd numbers. So one times three is three. Three times five is 15. Um, five times seven is 35. Looking at these examples, it looks like the product of two odd numbers is odd. This is a conjecture, but again, this does not necessarily mean that this statement is true. It's just a statement we believe to be true. In the next example, it says, why wouldn't the following conjecture be a great one to make using the data uh, presented? So here is the data. It looks like it's the average well lengths, and they give us the lengths of female whales and the length of male whales. And it says all female whales are longer than male whales. Well, let's look at this. Um, the data. If I'm saying all female whales are longer than male whales. That would mean every single example that we have in this data would be longer than male whales. However, if we look at this female whale, this female whale is not longer than this one, this one, or this one. So is it really fair of us to say that all female whales are longer than male whales? I would not believe so. Instead, we can say something like, on average, female whales are longer than male whales. Because then, Looking at the data, majority of the female whales are longer than the male whales. Um, so this would probably be a better conjecture to make. All right, moving on. Just like I said before, just because you make a conjecture does not necessarily mean that it's true. We must always prove a conjecture true. And sometimes we can use a counter example. To show that a conjecture is false, just like with the swan example, they found a black swan and that was a counter example to show that their conjecture of all swans are white is false. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to practice making counterexamples for these next two. So for this one here, it says for any real number x, x squared is greater than or equal to x. So we're going to try to come up with a counterexample that proves this false. Well, if x is equal to 1 half, um, it says that x squared would be greater than or equal to x. Well, if I square x, x squared would be 1 fourth. And comparing that to the value of x, which was 1 half, is 1 fourth greater than or equal to uh, 1 half? No. So um, this proves that this statement is not always necessarily true. Now, if you used negative 2, or if you used a positive number, um, whole number like 15, that would prove this statement tr true. But this statement, while it sounds like it may be true, there is some counterexamples that we can find that proves it false. 
The radius of every planet in the solar system is less than 50,000 kilometers. Um, be careful because this does say that this uh, data is the planet's diameter. And radius is half of the diameter. So if we look at half of all these numbers, we want to find a counterexample that would give us more than 50,000 kilometers in our, uh, in our radius. Well, Jupiter and Saturn, if I cut these numbers in half, they both would give me a radius that is over 50,000 kilometers. So both of these would be counterexample, counterexamples to show that this is false. So now we're going to get into what we're going to be using for proofs. So we use inductive reasoning a lot. Oh, I totally spelled Saturn wrong, sorry. We use inductive reasoning skills a lot when it comes to just forming conjectures. But then we need to use deductive reasoning to help us prove our um, conjectures true. So deductive reasoning is when we use facts, definitions, and properties to go through the process of proving something is true. So when we are using or when we are proving something in math, we are going to be using our strong deductive reasoning skills. All right, so we're going to end on these last four examples, just determining whether each of these are inductive or deductive reasoning. So you observe that for the last five or six weeks, the school cafeteria has served chicken on Thursday. Since tomorrow is Thursday, you can make a conjecture that chicken will be served. The key word is that you observed something. You observed a pattern. And when we are looking at patterns, we are using inductive reasoning. There is a myth that eel skin wallets will demagnetize credit cards because the skin of the electric eels used to make the wallet holds an electric charge. However, eel skin products are not made from electric eels, therefore the myth cannot be true. So when we say eel skin products are not made from electric eels, that is a fact. And when we use facts to make a conclusion, that is deductive reasoning. A boxer has won his last 11 matches in less than five rounds. So you conclude that he will win his next match in less than five rounds. So this is a pattern. We see that this boxer is pretty good. He won his last 11 matches in less than five, five rounds, but maybe this next match, he's a little tired. And so maybe he doesn't win it in less than five rounds. But your conclusion is that he does, based off of a pattern. So that means you are following inductive reasoning. Fred and Amanda both solve the same geometry problem. Fred's answer is x is equal to 2.5, while Amanda's answer is x is equal to 5 halves. You conclude that they're both correct. Well, here, it is a fact that if we do 5 divided by 2, that is equivalent to 2.5. So this is a mathematical fact that these are both on um, the same answer. So they are both going to be correct. You used deductive reasoning. All right, so this was just a little intro into the types of reasonings that we will be using. We will mainly be using deductive reasoning when we are writing proofs.